Aww, geek out. Hey, this is another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. Just another real quick episode this week. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of trailers and mm-hmm. stuff that uh, mm. that came out. Um, just real quick, you know, there was uh, Rogue One got its first trailer, so did Doctor Strange, and then we got the most recent trailer for Suicide Squad. So yes. let's kind of going in that order. What did you guys think of uh, the Rogue One first look? A Star Wars film I am extremely excited for. I think that there can be no higher endorsement. Yeah. yeah. For Josh to say that he's excited for a Star Wars film. Well, I when I saw the trailer, I thought, this is what I feel Star Wars, in, in my opinion, always should have been like. You know, we don't get um, any one person really stealing the scene. I feel like it actually feels... Like a war, like a battle. Because mm-hmm. you get that beachhead sequence with the AT-ATs. Yeah, and I always thought, okay, that's always in my mind what I felt like Star Wars. When I hear that title, should have been. So you liked the uh, opening scene of Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. The and end of Return the, of the Jedi. And, yeah, and the end of Return of the Jedi. And the yeah. end of Episode Four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> what do you boys think? It's pretty sweet. It's funny. I remember uh, the one guy that I watch on YouTube... Uh, that I know Chris loves so much uh, the Weekly Planet Mr. Sunday Movies he was like you know it's funny to think that this is like technically a Star Wars prequel he's like that's right I said it yeah prequel is a Star such a Wars bad word prequel now. yeah it's, it's a bad word for Star Wars fans but um, you know Felicity Jones very excited for oh fantastic She's actress fantastic and know, theory of everything uh, yeah kind of black cat um, mm. that's a bummer we never get to saw that you know happen but no, I, I, you know, that shot of the, the AT-AT and, and, you know, seeing the classic Stormtroopers again was really cool. Um, you know, we're going to be seeing, you know, classic Vader, you know, and, and just seeing it all kind of flesh out is going to be really interesting. I, you know, like I, I do like the idea that it is the first time that's not dealing with a star, you know, a Skywalker. You know, they're, they're no, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll throw I mean, it in there somewhere. If it's got Vader, there's a Skywalker. Well, that's true. Yeah. 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 Um, is but another he's Skywalker. Skywalker. Although in Vader's mind, Skywalker's Skywalker's dead. dead. Yeah, and he's not leading the show. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, he wasn't leading the show, and it looks like uh, the guy four. that uh, what's his name that plays Daggett in uh, Dark Knight Rises as kind of like the Liberace Nazi. In yeah, the, in the Liberace trailer. Nazi. He likes Liberace Nazi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he likes to get his cape all wet. Yeah, um, that bothered me. I was like, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you drew the line. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck yeah. you." <laughs> you know what? Liberace, no. Nachi. Um, but no, I think it looks fantastic. I mean, and, and they got the what? The Death Troopers, the all black. Oh yeah, suits look oh, really yes. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher, uh, I uh, I was uh, a little bit more. You hated it. <laughs> you <laughs> no, fucked. no, I didn't hate it. Uh, but I was just kind of like, okay, cool. Yeah. That's a trailer. Uh, yeah, like, it's just a tease. Yeah, yeah. like it, it, it's a pretty I, long tease, though. Yeah, it, it is. It wasn't like uh, a like uh, uh, episode seven. Yeah, but I wasn't like um, like I, I saw the the majority of the reaction I saw to it was was excited. You know, uh, you just like spooshing everywhere. Uh, spooshing. Yeah, spooshing. <laughs> uh, spooshing. Very and specific <laughs> Star Wars spooge. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but like it was. But I I was just like I mean, it looks good yeah you know but i uh, i i uh, probably my fault for like seeing the reaction uh-huh. before i watched the trailer yeah because like all these oh, nerds were just like oh my god this looks like the greatest star wars movie ever and i'm like well yeah it looks good i will it say it looks a little more brutal too it does yeah. yeah i will say it's not my favorite of the three we're going to talk about that's for sure it's probably my third if we're if we're ranking the three trailers that we're going to be talking about it's mm-hmm. number three and that's not me going fuck this movie yeah. even though the guy gets his cape wet and that really bothers me <laughs> like you're all pristine and you're going to walk through water you fucking idiot um, Liberace yeah come on man you're all white but um, it's pretty cool I gotta say this a quick aside a couple trailers that I'm that don't have me hyped and I was mentioning this to Josh yesterday I'm still not so, and I know where you fall on this. Okay, I'm not still completely sold on X Men Apocalypse. No, neither no. am I. Yeah. No, I mean, real quick, real quick. The last Zero trailer that quick? they showed for, I guess, the last like full length trailer, they have the same two shots twice <laughs> in it, and again, their ace in the hole is a bald man in a wheelchair. <laughs> That'd be like if the Batman v Superman trailer ended with like bald Lex Luthor. Mm. <laughs> Look out! Don't no one cares. <laughs> I, again, I'm sure the movie will be really good because the other ones have been like this new era of X Men, you yeah. know, 2.0, or whatever. With uh, it's got apocalypse. It, I'm sure it'll be, re- you know, and Oscar Isaac's is the man. Like, I'm sure it'll be really good. Just the trailers, 
are not doing it for me. Same thing with, I mean, we've only had the one, but for Star Trek Beyond. Yeah. 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 Although, those Tarzan trailers are pretty dope. <laughs> the second one that you posted on my wall, Josh, like, was, the first one was cool. The second one was like, I was like, I'm not even, like, joking around anymore. Like, I'm actually psyched for this you are, movie. You are, you paid for the whole seat, but only sitting on the edge. Yeah, 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 right? I'm actually seriously that's excited for Tarzan. I remember that. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> but I, I am, like, I, for I real. I got it from Carlos. Oh, okay. oh well, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, for real excited well, for Tarzan. I'm pretty sure got it from, like, a monster truck rally commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... So, what, yeah, I guess that's we've expelled our knowledge on Rogue One. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think of the... Uh, of the um, Doctor Strange? That's the one. There you go. Uh, so, I, as I'm, I believe I've noted before on the podcast, I don't know dick about Doctor Strange, <laughs> and I'm kind of tapped out on, on Cumberbatch. I, uh, I don't personally, like, I like watched all but, like, the most recent... Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. You know the 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 one where they like Sherlock. The pe- yeah, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> everyone <laughs> knows you, the show uh, that I'm talking about. I just was mentioning the character. S- Sam, did we? Because th- I remember uh, I watched. Did I just watch season one with you of the uh, Cumberbatch? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but like I watched, <laughs> you were relatively unenthused. Yeah. If I remember yeah. correctly, was, I watched. I watched all except fun. for like the 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 the, the, the holiday special that they did or whatever the the period piece one, the Infernal Bride. Sure, if that's what it's called. Uh, but like uh, because I didn't watch it because I was like I'm kind of I'm good on Cumberbatch for the next like year or so like I don't need him in anything did you see the imitation game yes it did that's pretty good yeah (laughs) and I think I think that was like I was like cool Cumberbatch is that's, that's like that's like, that, that's what he is like it is on, peak. yeah he's on prime uh, you know, so like i'm like i'm like I, I i don't need to see him in this he might be perfect he might be great whatever but then the trailer comes out and i sat there and i was watching it and i was like okay now i want to see this movie yeah i remember <laughs> yeah. i saw your status you were like yeah. all right the hype is real like it's for some like, reason the first trailer the first time i saw it there was no sound like it was my phone was being weird or whatever and i just watched it anyway because the visuals were so yeah, no, cool the, visu- the visuals soul were getting punched out of his body the inception yeah. type like other dimensions i, I love how it. yeah i love how he's like looking he gets yeah. punched so hard he gets not his soul gets knocked out and long enough for him to look at his body like ah oh, shit yeah. his soul <laughs> still dancing yeah yeah um, and, and so like i don't I, I i'm still not like ooh man i have to see this like opening night but I'm like i'm gonna i definitely want to check it you know yeah i'm super hyped i mean i'm i'm, pr- I'm really hyped for it man i uh Cumberbatch, I've never, I've never been tired of him because, like, I don't, I've never been like, like, you know, watching a lot of. I mean, yeah, I think he's a talented guy. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's a great actor. I'm not, no, no, uh, no, no, and he offense it, to his skills. Yeah, and I've, you know, we've all seen the pictures, like the set pictures or the official photos they released. He looks really good as Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is like one of those characters that, like, I don't think he'd ever refer to as like looking badass, you know, because he <laughs> looks like he's wearing clothes that are too big for him, but um. It's part of being the Sorcerer Supreme. I think you get a shirt that fits you, but, you know. Uh, the Eye of Agamotto. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, the shirts are extra large. I got a large. Um, By the horary host of Hogoth, <laughs> I need a better fitting garment. It, what's, what's his uh, service? Is it Wong? Wong is his service. Yeah. Get me another shirt, Wong. <laughs> yeah. um, but, no, I think the, the, the visuals, like, I got goosebumps watching it, you know, when, when they're, there's that shot where he kind of, like, I don't know who it is. I can't remember if, you, if we even know who it is in the trailer, but they kind of Mads Mickelson is as maybe Dormammu? where he just like yes. throws the the scene you're talking about. Yeah, that's Mads Mickelson. He just like it. throws the ceiling upside down yeah, and just all, the hallway. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah, really. And it looks. It's like uh, you know. It's kind of, it reminds me of Inception. You can't help but think of Inception, which is fine cause because I love the I, folding. Space. Yeah, yeah, but like you know, technology has come so far since then, so yeah, it's even. It's better. wild. That was six years ago. You know. I know. That's that, that is fucking crazy, <laughs> dude. Holy crap! But yeah. um... It looked really good, and yeah, I'm with Chris. I mean, I've, I've read the Doctor Strange that I've ever read in a comic. It's I'm sad to say is if he's shown up in a comic of a character I'm reading, um, and so that's kind of a bummer that I haven't really branched out and read more Doctor Strange. But um, I've liked when he showed up. I, I like that he has this presence, you know, to him that he's always there. The thing that bums me out is when he like, he sits out Civil War. He's like, I could end this, but I won't. Yeah, remember, it's like, dude, this is the point of being a superhero. Dick. Remember when we had Anthony Johnson on the show and he was like, every like every British writer wants to write Judge Dredd, every American writer wants to write Doctor Strange, and I was like, is that true? No, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe after this. I mean, like I said, the cool thing is we need to go ask him. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you want to work every write American author? That we're that's interviewing. the secret. That's the secret. They're like, so like, tell us what you're geeking out about. And do you want to yeah. write Doctor Strange? Like, oh my god, I yeah, should have brought that so up bad. with Layman last week. Doctor Strange is so fucking us, awesome. Tell us what you're geeking out on, and why is it that Doctor, you want to write, write Doctor, Doctor Strange? Strange? 
Let me tell you about what a fucking right Doctor Strange. Um, Lars Ulrich? Yeah, Lars Ulrich wants to write Doctor Strange. Why wouldn't Lars Ulrich yeah. want to write Doctor Strange? I invented Doctor Outside Strange. Outside of uh, Benedict, there's only one other actor I could have seen fill the role who's also played another Marvel hero. Bruce it, Campbell? No, the uh, oh God, that'd be actor amazing. who played uh, Mr. Fantastic. Oh, Young Griffith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know who they originally offered the role of Doctor Strange to? Joaquin Phoenix. Yep. And Johnny Depp was in talks. I don't know if he was ever in talks, but they, they threw his name out there. They got pretty close with uh, Joaquin, but he... Joaquin. Yeah, Joaquin Are you the Phoenix. boys who've been Joaquin Phoenix <laughs> in my tool shed? The, uh, he didn't want to sign to commit to a multi-picture deal. It's the Ryan Gosling thing, too. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I like the... Uh, when it, In the trailer, it cuts to, like, rich, successful doctor, actual Doctor Strange, you know? And then it cuts to, like... His hands saved Well, thousands. it cuts to him when he's um, washing his hands, and it cuts to his hands being all jacked up, because that's the story that... I don't know how far they're going to go into it, but, like, you know, he's that world-famous uh, neurosurgeon. neurosurgeon. It smashes his hands, can't do it, and has yeah, a Batman it, Begins moment. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, hitting the broad strokes very well, yeah. at least just from the trailer. I, I had heard that it's not going to be well, a straight so origin story. Yeah, and I was like, I was actually, you know, look, I know people are kind of like so tired of origin stories. I fucking hate origin but stories. the little I know about Doctor Strange, I watched the animated movie they did. I yeah. really, I, and, and I know kind of the basic thing. I really like his origin story. Like, it's an interesting arc that he goes on. Because when you first meet Doctor Strange, he's kind of like Tony Stark-esque prick man. Exactly. And then he beca- looks like Tony Stark. Yeah. Um, They're facial hair bros. Yeah, oh. that, and also that that great original, well done, Sam. Well that great done. Steve Ditko art back in the I, day. I, I know that scene you're talking about. Well done. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it looks really good. Again, we're getting a Doctor Strange movie. We're getting a f- real serious Doctor Strange movie. It looks yeah. great. Well, I feel like and a Wonder Woman movie. Uh, yes. They're lightly touching Da-da-da. on the origin for him is okay, just because he is such a. You know, outside of all of the others we've gotten so far, such an unknown yeah. that they have to do it just a little bit so the audience, you know, uh, gets caught sure. up to speed yeah. on yeah, who no, the I character is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Average man on the street didn't know like Iron Man's origin. I feel like until no, two thousand eight. No. You know, the only yeah. and, and and the 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 surmounting of Iron Man's origin I knew was Ultimate Iron Man by um, uh, Oliver Orson Scott. Or, yeah, Ul- yeah, it's card. Yeah. God, that first Iron Man movie is still like the best. Oh, it's pretty money. It's so fucking good. They had it on TV early. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have it, Josh. We gotta have Heard that little. little... <laughs> uh, Come on, yeah. we we know where my loyalties lie. Two, Cap. Yep. Well, I thought. Yeah. What's your favorite of the Iron Man trilogy? Three. Okay. Oh. Okay. I remember when we all watched it, and we're like, man, this movie's like, wait, wait, this movie fucking rules. And then it gets like to that one point, where we're like, oh, it drops a little bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the first one though is like. Probably my favorite Marvel movie still. I remember just being so gobsmacked in theaters because there was yeah, the, <laughs> that was the that was the year that we also got the Dark Knight. Yeah, and so it was like comic book movies. I know what comic book movies are, and yeah. then fucking the one two punch of Iron Man Dark Knight. I was like, ah, yeah, because <laughs> not to like go on an Iron Man fucking thesis, but like when it starts off and he's kind of like joking, around, hey, uh, and then you get I think the moment that Mar- for me Marvel comic like Marvel Cinematic Universe fucking clicked or like I was like oh they're taking this seriously is that shot of him lying there in the desert and the blood starts to seep through his shirt yeah. and I was like there you go they got it like they're taking this shit they're seriously they're in man. it to win they're in it to win it just like that one Bring High School on Musical movie. 3 I don't know I'm just thinking <laughs> of High School Musical things take it to the limit <laughs> That's not a kid's movie. No, it's an Eagles song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. We, we, we stay on topic here, Sam. Yeah. I don't know if you know Geek Hell, but we stay on topic no, here. Yeah, you're right. There's no tangents. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. This has all been about the Doctor Strange trailer. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All of yeah. Enough about him. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, you're, you're stoked, aren't you, Josh? Oh, extremely. I, I love that now that Marvel is kind of being like and telling the audience, uh, okay, we're kind of... Uh, slowly going away from this current setup of the Avengers you know they've had their run we're going to start phasing them out slowly and bringing a new line of heroes to be a new team or just you know new adventures to tell we're really diving into the heroes that many of you may not know or giving extreme fan service Mm -hmm. by giving you know uh Ant-Man then Ant-Man and the Wasp Doctor Strange uh giving Guardians of the Galaxy now two movies coming out um, it I also won't. opens the door for the mystic. You know, we don't yeah. this open they, everything. You know, uh, Ant Man. You know, was working on like that. You know, ground level <laughs> microscopic. 
All those microscopic Capers. heroes in the Marvel yeah. universe. If you ever wanted to, you know, crawl up a bl- bl- blade of grass in a Marvel movie, we got it now. Doors open. But anyway, the mystic. I don't know where I was going with that. The mystic stuff is going to be cool. I mean, that opens so much. I what's going I won't on. be happy until we get a Squirrel Girl movie, though. Me too. That'll be Chris. a Netflix series. Me too. I won't be happy until we get a Moon Knight that. Netflix series. And the way that book sold out. Yeah, Moon Knight's got to be yeah, on the Moon radar. Moon Knight number one came out this week, and it already sold. I haven't read it yet, out. but I'm really excited. Uh, but I, I mean, the thing is, like this, like the little, like you know, Mister Knight, like the button, you know, that that's fine. Give him this. Uh, you know, I, I feel like if they do that, I feel like the Netflix thing is going to be English in there. No, no. <laughs> I was like, hammer, hammer, hammer. It's it's all like you know, the suit's cool, but bring back the goddamn like full on Moon Knight suit, the cape, yeah. with the spike gauntlets with like chunks of flesh stuck in it, David Finch style. Mm. 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 Um, reading Moon Knight at the bottom. What I think about, yeah, what I think about by Charlie Houston. Um, yeah. The uh, what I think about Doctor Strange more so than like Ant Man, and Ant Man was very visually sumptuous because mm, sumptuous. you know, yeah, scrumptious, scrumptious too. Yeah, just hits all those taste buds. But the um, it it was very visually um, arresting because it had it, it the the action set pieces were different because it's a different power set than we're used to seeing. Doctor Strange. If there is any movie that you should probably see in like 3D and like just like mm, get yourself point. fully fucking immersed, it's going to be Doctor Strange. For real. For Agreed. Real. For real. Um, so I think, you know, especially like you guys were saying based on like the kind of the visual elements that we see in the trailer. Yeah. Um, it looks really, really good. Yeah. You know, if you're looking for uh, some good Doctor Strange stories, uh, you know, look read Doctor Strange, The Oath by Brian K. Vaughn. Um, Jason Aaron's currently writing Doctor Strange. Uh, there's a um, the Marvel Knights origin, of course. Mm, there's a there's a story that I haven't read that I'm really I really want to read where him and Doctor Doom team up. Mm, there's and they a go sto- to hell. There's a story where his girlfriend gets borked by uh, Ben Franklin. Yeah. Um, no, but like the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the s- uh, no, ex- I'm <laughs> 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 you know what to get me for my birthday. Um, the. Uh, <laughs> the the Doctor Strange Doctor Doom is they go to hell to save Doctor Doom's mom. Oh yeah, that's like fucking awesome. And it's supposed to be really good too. Like it's not just like a, g- a gimmick thing. Like I want to check that out. Now's the time. <laughs> time is now. Yeah. Imagine all those comicsology Doctor Strange sales coming up. Oh dude, I like I said, my dad does Marvel Unlimited now, and even just like the Marvel app, it was just Doctor Strange everything. And like the day before, you couldn't find Doctor Strange if you tried. All strange everything. All strange. All strange everything. They made that. Do you ever see that TV movie? You ever seen clips of it from the seventies? Yeah, <laughs> I've never seen the movie, but I've seen clips of it. And all right, I feel like a movie theater now just has to do like you know a they're marathon. gonna be doing that at the Alamo. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, a marathon of like the old like eighties Captain America, oh, yeah. the, the that seventies you know, Spider Man. Mm, I had that on the like nineties Fantastic yeah. Four, uh, <laughs> animated Human Torch. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, awesome. and uh, the 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 and that Doctor Strange like and Dolph Lundgren Punisher yes oh, oh yes. That's, yes yes but the difference yes. is that's f- the, the last act of that movie is I, here's the thing when it's like all red and he's fighting all the ninjas and he's like kicking ass and he's like you know whatever and then he has like the kid with the gun and he's like you killed my dad I want to see first of all I was like it was fucked up and I was like shoot the kid like how <laughs> fucked up would that be like it's just like full on because you know this is like. Maybe like everyone jokes about the first rated R comic movie. That might be like one of the first rated R comic movies, like nineteen eighty nine. Like you know, Batman eighty nine comes out. We're stuff. pretty sure it is. Yeah, and so, but could you imagine if they did a comic book story following up that kid? Like that kid becomes the next big crime boss, and Punisher has to fucking deal with him. Like yo, you know, I killed your dad like twenty years ago, and I look like Dolph Lundgren. But Dolph Lundgren, when he does, and also there's that scene where he's like naked, like all oily, and you just see his ass. Um, <laughs> you see his ass because it's Dolph Lundgren. He's Dolph Lundgren. When he doesn't speak, he looks and acts like the Punisher. Again, Sam was saying like it's not very hard. You just fucking fire a gun and look menacing. <laughs> but like, there's like like publicity shots. If you like type in, there's one of him like this, like a pistol, and he's just like kind of like yeah, like in a black shirt and stuff. Also, how has somebody not like gone in and just superimposed the skull on already? Like, I feel like it w- like and nowadays the internet it wouldn't be that hard. And the weird thing is, if someone put the skull on his shirt, even in like the last act of that movie, which would be the prime time to do it. That movie would be like ten percent better, just by you know, just by seeing the skull on his shirt. He doesn't have it; he has it on the knife yeah. at the end of the knife. But that movie is actually like curiously, fascinatingly, somewhat good. It's like it's it's an eighties action movie. And, yeah, yeah, and, and it just and happens I, that for sure. And I think we all love eighties action movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, better than Cobra. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry to say it is. Yeah, sorry, Sly. <sighs> yeah. 
cutting your your pizza with a pair of scissors yeah. for no reason because yeah. it's against Character the rules. Development, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, the what do you guys think of the late? You know, the blitz ballroom blitz, not blitzkrieg not, pop. <laughs> yeah. Some people were saying on Facebook, it's like oh, dummies. Song. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of the latest Sweet. Suicide Squad? Sweet. It's uh Sweet. for no. for, for no me, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh. For me, for me, it was just kind of like, uh, you know, like I was so excited by the uh, the, the 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 Queen, yeah, Bohemian uh, Rhapsody, the, the Bohemian Rhapsody one, that like I that like I'm still just kind of coasting on yeah. that one. Like this is like it's for me, it's so much. Uh, it, it's not so much that this one is awesome, but it's just like oh, good, it's not a letdown. You mm. know, like it's still like I'm still able to coast with that same excitement, which is good because like when I first heard about Suicide Squad, I was like, oh, okay, cool. They're making a Suicide Squad movie. I'll check that out. Yeah. And then like the Queen trailer came out and I was like, oh, okay, now I know what I'm doing near the end of the year, yeah. you know? And so now I can just, you know, yeah. keep yeah. going with that. I, I feel like this trailer uh, gave us a bit more information still without not spoiling a whole lot. Yeah. Like they Get kind more of, Batman. yeah. And they also include in this one, kind of the idea of like, uh, they are microchipped and have explosives put into them. Mm-hmm. Um, the staple of the Suicide Squad. Yeah, uh, we get a greater idea of why this mission is being set up and why they are being brought together to go on this suicide mission. And um, I like the Superman nod where they talk about you know in the beginning if Superman yeah. ripped open the ceiling of the White House, which he kind of does. Yeah. Um, in the non now DCU, but uh, I'm with. I mean, I, I agree with Chris. Like you know, the second trailer was like the like probably the best. I mean, if we're talking about best Suicide Squad trailers. But I, my f- maybe my favorite moment so far, outside of um, Will Smith's dead shot on top of the car, just like firing from the wrist cannons, like that's just such a straight out of the comic book. And like the pose he has is so great. But is Harley Quinn when they're talking about like vexing or whatever, and she's like, "I'm known to be quite vexing." I'm just forewarning you. That scene cracks that that cracks me up every time when she says that. So, but yeah, I think it's. Uh, I hope all all blah blah. blah, blah ballroom blitz is in the movie yeah i feel like that's a perfect suicide yeah i hope all this music we've been treated to in the trailers does make an appearance in the film and also we get a really quick uh blink and you miss it scene of uh comments Mm, character in the film yeah yeah talking to the joker yeah how i mean how often i mean with all the pop music it kind of like the comparisons to to uh guardians of the galaxy are rife Mm. i think Um, at this at the time though but I think Guardians of the Galaxy made it really popular, yeah. you know, with that kind of stuff. But like, also the kind of cast of misfits. True, but I mean, like, yeah, with like the using the pop songs stuff like that. But I mean, you know, Cameron Crowe has been doing that since you know day one. Well, yeah, but Cameron Crowe never directed a mis- misfit team of superheroes film. Yeah, well, no, but I'm talking no, but a lot of <laughs> any time there is a pop song in like a trailer, like a pop song that a lot of people maybe don't know, their immediate thing is like, oh, they're ripping off Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's like. Well, no. I mean, like the idea of putting a pop song in a trailer that's not well known, like from thirty years ago, isn't like solely yeah. Guardians. Also, the music for Guardians weaves itself into through the trailers the story arc. Yeah, it's integral of the to the. Film. I, I don't think Rick Flag's going to have an awesome mix. Oh yeah, no. No, unless no. he did. No. <laughs> I mean, who out of that group would have it? Harley Quinn. Harley, Harley Quinn. Quinn. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I mean, like again, Maybe I'm not Deadshot? <laughs> Captain Boomerang. Yeah, right. I'm not. Yeah, the Jay Courtney story uh, performance we've all been waiting for. I uh, like I love weirdly his that's true though. In the film, well, so I mean, far from what I've seen, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's the only because like, Jake and I always called Jay Courtney kind of like to his credit or I guess discredit because there's no positive way we can spin this. Yeah, we always called him one of the more boring, <laughs> like act, like in Terminator Genesis and stuff. It's like he's just it's kind of boring. like boring. Yeah, it's boring. and like is Sarah, Sarah is it Sarah Clark? So, Emily, Emily Clark. Emily Clark. Emily, Emily yeah, Clark. I'm thinking. I'm getting like Scrubs and everything. So. Um, Sarah Chalk. Uh, no, she is like you know, does her best. And, she did, and she's, she's straight so, up with so Hamilton, great in, yeah. in Terminator Genesis. Like, you know, she's like the Ewan McGregor of the prequels for that entire Terminator Genesis. She just brings it. Well, there's that weird thing where like they're getting naked in the shadows, and it's clearly like a CG shadow because like yeah. it's just like a stick yeah. with like massive breast and it's like what the fuck happened here yeah. and then shadow jay courtney has a massive dong <laughs> <laughs> this is my jay courtney yeah that's um, his terminator yeah <laughs> hasta la vista this is my genesis um <laughs> he'll be back yeah but any, any, anyway to, but yeah i'm not saying that like you know uh you know 
the Guardians thing. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's always been weird to me that like people are like, you know, the Guardians created this thing. I think what they did, like you were saying, is they really made that like a well-known thing, kind of like how the Social Network was like, hey, we're gonna do Creep as like an acapella, and now everyone's like, that's a fucking great idea. Let's do that for every fucking every trailer. Every trailer needs an acapella. Also, like that, the single piano needs- note. Yeah. Ding! You know, Star Wars was like, you know, they were big time with that. It was episode seven. Uh, uh, the Dark Knight Rises was one of those. Yeah, 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 it had it as well. I was like, Mr. They were also, and like, uh, fucking Inception with the bomb. Yeah, just the yeah, noise. <laughs> that became you. Well, I mean, the, the Junkie XL drums is like a, you know, Mad Max and, you know, and with uh, uh, Wonder Woman's theme. Is she with you? <laughs> Someone was like, was how could Bruce you. Wayne say. Is she with you? Where he fucking knows who that is. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's, that's I, it was, I think it was, I forgot what I was on. It was like cracked or whatever. They're like, how dumb is Batman in this movie? Where he turns to Superman, After or no, he knows file. Superman goes, "Is she with you?" And he goes, "I thought she was with you." Where he knows, no, she's with you because you emailed her earlier. The world's greatest detective. How many people have seen Clark Kent and Superman and everyone the Daily Planet's like, oh hey, we're working with Superman. No, no, but like not everyone is in that scene. <laughs> Like, world's greatest detective staring at her. Yep. World's greatest journalist. Yeah. Dopes. Dopes. <laughs> Dopes. Lois Lane is the world's greatest journalist. <laughs> yeah, she won a Nobel Prize, for Christ's sake. A Nobel Prize. Nobel. You, you mean a Pulitzer Prize? Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> she won a Nobel Prize. I don't, well. Yeah, yeah. her, her articles Prize. are so good, apparently. Yeah. That she, they support peace, chemistry, and economics. Yeah. yeah. All three Nobel Prizes get awarded yeah. to, That's to right. Lois Lane. <laughs> uh, real quick, I did some uh, investigating. Speaking of Lois Lane, uh, if you'd like, I have four rated R uh, comic book movies that came out before the 1989 Punisher. Oh, let's do it. Uh, starting uh, in reverse order, 1988, Akira. Oh, of course. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. 1982, Conan the Barbarian. Of course. Yeah. 1981, Heavy Metal. Of course. Yeah. And then 1972, the oldest R-rated comic book movie I could find, Fritz the Cat, which is based on an indie comic book. Uh, that, uh, Fucking Akira. And, like, yeah, right? I've only, we've only been talking about that like nonstop for... Uh, yeah. Jesus. Playing at the Alamo Draft... Oh, well, playing yesterday well, at the Alamo Draft House. Batman. Once this movie... Uh, or once this episode airs. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll make the killing joke the non-first animated R-rated yeah. comic book movie. Well, they, well, they just, well, you know, said Akira D- as well. Yeah, yeah. Akira, well, yeah, because of yeah. Akira. Akira and Fritz, yeah. yeah. Both of them, yeah. But uh, you you went to Seattle. I did. I went to the Emerald City Comic-Con. I was there when <laughs> they... <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I saw... I didn't see the announcement, but you know we can talk about it now, the Judge Dredd alien predator thing i mean we announced it technically yeah. last week yeah but i mean like you know the I, you know the buzz was there you know they had the sign and stuff it was really cool nice did you go did you go to that unveiling and you were like knew about it i fucking knew <laughs> i Duh. fucking knew world's greatest detective um go fuck world's yourselves. greatest journalist <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> i got um, the Nobel prize remember when he was like a fucking like a tv like journalist where he was on television clark kent that made even less sense because then actually everyone saw him anyway um <laughs> What was the other thing? Oh, so yeah, we went to Emerald City. It was cool. You know, uh, Alex and I, uh, my friend of Geek Out, we did the uh, he, uh, yeah. Nerdswole. Check out Nerdswole. Yeah, he's a uh, part of Nerdswole. He's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you swole, the, bro? Be- yeah, the fucking best logo. Of, like, it's the, a, it's uh, someone doing the live long and prosper sign while flexing. While flexing with a giant bicep. It's pretty pretty great. Yeah, but um, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're more of a website, really, than, uh, you know, with articles they and do, stuff. They the do era. more blogs. Uh, but they have they the occasional blog. podcast yeah. uh, and We've, stuff like that. Yeah, I've appeared on Sam it. Sam and I have talked on that before. Once, yeah. Um, anyway, we had a good time. You know, Corey and the and the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people at Image, you know, hooked us up to help us, uh, to help kind of, you know, volunteer our services and sell some comic books. I uh, met some people and it was really cool. I was really, I was bummed that Melissa Benoist canceled though. That was like the one thing I was, I was like hoping to, to get to meet Melissa Benoist, but maybe it's San Diego. Um, but yeah, I got, you they know, have had a Supergirl panel or something. Yeah, that'd be nice. DCTV, yeah. they usually do, I feel like. Yeah. By the yeah. time this airs, yeah. the first yeah. season is over by the time this airs. But, um, no. I know, dude. Ah. <laughs> I can't wait for the family. But, uh, you know, I, I, I got to talk to a couple of creators and stuff like that. And Anyone leap out that you want to share um, with the rest well, of the class? Kurt Busick was cool. That was somebody I, I wasn't expecting to, to run into. The guy that wrote Marvels and mm-hmm. Secret Identity. Secret Identity, one of my, you know, one of the, I think one of the most 
creative comic book stories, let alone Superman stories. Um, you know, just a quick rundown of a kind of in our, you know, takes place in our kind of world where this Superman is just a comic book character, a fictional character, a character in the book is named Clark Kent as a joke. His, you know, parents name him Clark Kent and he's been giving Superman stuff for birthdays and Christmases and he's like, I'm sick of Superman. I don't like Superman. He gets put on blind dates with girls named Lois and Lana and then one day he wakes up and he's floating above his house and he's like, I have Superman's powers and it's really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, what I like about that book, spoilers, because it's like, but even though it's like 11 years old, isn't he, that old? Okay. He never finds out. No, he doesn't. And, he and never again, finds out. it's not something that it's, uh, you know, that he it wouldn't make sense that he's from Krypton. But yeah, it's kind of like Batman Year 100 too. Spoilers, <laughs> you don't really, you know, they don't answer the question who Batman is, and that's really cool. Um, but yeah, it, they, you know, it's just it's a really really great book. And anyway, he um, kept referring to me as a cashy person because he needed help. Like if someone was buying something, he'd be like, I have to go over Autumn the lands, iPad. Yeah. He was an auto land signing, which sold really well for him there. And, and, and I had to swipe the card and stuff. Sold really well in Los Angeles, too. He was going, cashy person, cashy person. After like the you know, third or fourth time, he's like, I'm sorry, what's your actual name? And I was like, Jake. He's like, Jake, cashy person. JCP, you're JCP. And I was like, I'll take it, whatever. I was like, anything you need, Mr. Music. Could have called, should have called yourself JCVD. Yeah, JCVD. <laughs> but, no, but he was really great to talk to. Um, you know, I, I got a book signed for uh, my dad by uh, Ed Brubaker. Let him know that he's my dad's favorite writer, and he's like, I'm pretty sure I'm everyone's every dad's favorite writer. <laughs> he was really nice, and uh, you know, got, you know, just got the you know, kind of just there were you know, Scott Young was around, and and you know, I, I talked to uh, um, Alex DeCampi. Alex DeCampi for a quick second, and thanked her for coming on the show and talking about Sam Peckinpah and whatnot, and and she you know she was busy you know kind of uh, I think she she was like she was doing a sketch on one of her issues for a local comic book guy that she knew and like you know she was talking so she was kind of so just a really quick thing it was I had a couple minutes in between lunch she didn't have any signings at the image booth not at the image booth unfortunately um, but yeah she, she was just like oh you know thanks so much you know I love going on and talking about stuff and told her we were all looking forward to the Kickstarter and the, you know whatnot. and um, I saw Meredith Graham but I didn't get to talk to her um, she had a signing and I was kind of on the other side of the booth working on stuff so but it was really cool like you know this is the first con that I've been to and you know Sam was at Los Angeles, where I was seeing people that we have now talked to. I don't think when I was at L.A. I saw anybody that we had. Oh, really? Talked I saw Jim Zub too. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. You know, like none of those guys were at. Yeah. Oh, really? Con, okay. Because it's a smaller con. Yeah. I talked to Jim Zub a lot, and he's just like the coolest dude. Oh, yeah. His royal Zubness. Yeah, the Zub. Yeah. Uh, although I didn't mention the podcast at all, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, no, he was just. Yeah, we were just talking. Oh, I do want to say really quick. I saw the Outcast premiere. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That show is going to fuck people up in the best way possible. It they played it in a um, Showtime, right? Uh, Cinemax, oh. maybe. I think one of those. I forgot that uh, was a thing. Maybe it is Showtime. <laughs> I can't remember. It's one. It's Showtime, Cinemax, one of those. Um, yeah, but uh, this will save them. But it was in uh, the showroom in in uh, I guess off First Street. Oh, the Showbox or Showbox? Showbox, yeah. And um, the showroom. Anyway. You know, we all, uh, Alex and I went and a bunch of image people there and they gave out tickets and stuff. So it wasn't like it was like, you know, what you're not supposed to know or anything. But, uh, you know, they were very, you know, everyone was very polite and no one taking pictures or anything or, you know, videotaping um, because they wanted to, you know, keep this kind of thing. And I'm not going to say anything that happens in the show, obviously, but I'll just say it's really creepy. Um, it follows that first issue really, really well. And um, it, it, the thing I loved about it so much was that it dealt with atmosphere over jump scares. It was all about atmosphere. Which I'm more about unless, yes. unless I'm playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. No, I mean, the occasional, and I'm very, like, very, very occasional jump scare is fine. But I think that's such a cheap thrill. It's a cheap storytelling technique. So yeah. The reason why Five Nights gets the pass is because... Well, video games, it, video games, it works. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, you know, that, that all kind of... Uh, <laughs> just let you kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I even heard that pop yeah, in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's like Ace Fraley. Yeah, I just like shocked my lips. Yeah. Shock me. <laughs> finish the podcast Make like you finished the feel better. Like you finished the concert after getting electrocuted. I feel but like um, the bottom of my lip go numb. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no. So I, I, I'm really looking forward for other people to see it. It was one of those shows that I just immediately wanted to see the rest of it. Um, a really well done show, and they played it on like you know the you know the the show box like professional speakers like sound speakers yeah because that's a cool little like that's basically seattle's 9 30 club yeah yeah no really it has that feel definitely you know and uh the like the volume was so loud but it wasn't like like you couldn't it was just like Turn the fucking out. it was so perfect that like when the show starts it has it does kind of have a walking dead 
type opening, a very atmospheric feel, like kind of creepy. Does Bear McCreary do the music for no, this one too? No, I don't think so. Um, but so much so that like they were walking on like the wood you know panel floor and just the creaking of it was terrifying. I was like, if that's already freaking me out, holy crap! And it really, it really, really was awesome. So keep an eye out for the Outcast premiere. As I think it's in June. I think so. It's the summer yeah, season. June. Um, I th- as a bit of a tangent, I was um hanging out at John's last night. Yeah. And we were on Twitch, and I was like, just for shits, <laughs> who's streaming a Five Nights at Freddy's play right now? Out of all four Five Nights at Freddy's games, one person was streaming the first Five Nights at Freddy's. Really? The fat is dead. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a bummer. So, yeah, I guess that that's the case. Is there any plans for any more games, or are they like, we told our arc? There, there was Five no Nights more. at Freddy's World, which was an RPG. Oh, really? <laughs> and it, was, uh, it bombed when it was first five released. Five Nights at yeah. Freddy's it The bombed, Sims. It bombed so hard that Scott Cathon... Five l- Nights at Simmies? Yeah. ...released the game for free. Really? He was like, just take it for free. I'm oh, sorry. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it comes Although, out next year. <laughs> I was about to say, the movie's still a thing. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be Jump Scare Central. Yeah, and probably. then the fad I mean, will be an right too. back. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe he'll release a movie to tie in. It apparently takes him like all of like four months to put a game together, which is impressive. So it is because there was like I, it was even shorter now. I think about it because the first Five Nights came out in August of like what 2014, mm. and the last one like four came out in like was it like April or something? That sounds about of, right. Of like last year, yeah. And so it, that's only like a eight month period he puts out four games it's like shit man shit just imagine if he put that much effort into one game mm. <laughs> it'd actually be good oh, oh! taking five nights of freddy's a task <laughs> i mean they're fine it would yeah. restart yeah. the trend maybe yeah. <laughs> you know speaking of games also these past few weeks i picked up and have been playing uh quantum break how do you like being sean ashmore that was a damn good segue oh thank you chris <laughs> um i absolutely love being uh ice man with the abilities of the flash you and mean, a gun you mean jake from the animorphs because <laughs> he was on the animorphs tv show wow playing the main character jake hmm. i'll have to go back and actually watch the show again goal. As Jimmy Olsen. Mm. And his brother, twin brother, played somebody else. I can't remember who it was. Evil Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. <laughs> James Olsen. <laughs> but um, I, I love the game because um, when it was originally announced, they, uh, Remedy uh, kept saying that there was going to be a television element to it. And a lot of people Check were thinking... Check out my thinking, Remedy. <laughs> um, so is there going to be like an actual live action TV series, like on a network or something? And then as more news came out, you found out that there's a... The television series was in the game. Oh. Like, um, after each act, and there's five of them you complete, there's about four missions in each act, you get treated to a live-action television series that's about anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes uh, that's all told from the uh, bad guy's perspective. Played by uh, Aiden Gillen? Uh, yeah, he's the uh, head of the corporation called Monarch, and right as you play <laughs> as him, the monarch. you <laughs> make a... <laughs> You have to make a decision as him. There's two of them. You, you know, you go one way or go another, and then the television series uh, fleshes out what that decision means for the company. How does Quantum Break stack up to uh, the division? Um, they're two completely different beasts. Uh, the you play Quantum Break if you want a really strong story game. Mm-hmm. You know, something to but just visually experience. It, it's still third. It, that one's a third person shooter. Yes, and with then, very light cover mechanics. And the division is first person. Uh, no, it's also third person. Mm. But you know, in Quantum Break, you have uh, powers. Yeah, time manipulation powers. So if you ever wanted to see what would happen if you gave the Flash a gun, this is basically it. You know, you can uh, freeze people in time bubbles. You can. Uh, just speed, like the Flash. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you can speed yourself up fast enough to where, um, you know, you can outrun bullets, outrun people, get behind them really quickly. Um, and it was also a trailer that had an acapella version of a pop song. Yes. Yes, it did. It come as you uh, as you are by uh, Nirvana. Yeah. It's like come. Oh, that's right. Yeah, as you are. Like atmospheric as shit. As you. What would are. be? What's a? What would be a pop song that just wouldn't work, but would be so fucking funny? Firework. <laughs> they, well, like, baby, they did that. What they did that in uh, the interview. 
the interview had fun. Oh yeah, yeah. When yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When that was played for a joke. But, but yeah. I mean, it, it, but they yeah, still did. It'd be yeah. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, holla back what, girl. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What's? Wasn't there something recently that did hungry like the wolf? Yes. What was it that did Hungry Like the Wolf? I don't know, but fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hungry like the wolf. Probably something werewolf related. Mm. Probably. Yeah, it was yeah. probably like uh, whatever that show on a Teen Wolf or something yeah. like that. Or the originals or something else that's just stupid. Yeah, or yeah. Ba- is, I don't know if Beauty and the Beast is still on the CW, but fuck them. Beauty and the Beat? <laughs> or, or Grimm Beauty or Beauty and the Beautician? Or Beautician and the Beast. Beautician and the Beast. With Timothy Dalton. You can't knock Grimm, Sam. My mom likes it, so it apparently has to be good. That show is <laughs> always on when I'm at the gym. What show? Well, really just like on Monday. Uh, Grimm. Oh. And I always see it. I'm like, what the you fuck know, is going on? You know on? what show is always on when I'm at the gym? Castle. <laughs> Which is a pleasant thing. I know I know yeah. what's going on in Castle. I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. Sweet. Oh, good. They're solving a murder mystery. <laughs> yeah. Good for them. Yeah. Again. Night- Nice rapport between Nathan Fillion and, and Stana Kadic. Sweet. Yeah. But then I watch Grimm. I'm like, what the f-? And I'm, I'm watching it without sound. Yeah. Because uh, I'm just like working out or whatever. And it just happens on one of the TVs. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So anybody to else? To be fair, I'm pretty sure most of the audience probably, if they actually took two seconds to think about it, would be asking the same question. Probably. but Even with all audio. No, yeah. I'll have to ask my mom that then if she understands the plot at all. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would hope, I would hope. But uh, anybody got anything to add before we call it a call it a week? Uh, I was in New York for a couple of days visiting uh, friends. That was fun. Yeah, you went to Washington Square Park, where yeah. I normally rejuvenate. Yeah, I, I, we, we were <laughs> the we Lazarus were, Pit there. Yeah, it, there is a fountain, uh, <laughs> which is Sam's Lazarus Pit. Uh, it's like it's like really quiet. And everyone's like, oh, what a lovely day! You just see all of a sudden you see Sam comes out of the pit like. Oh! It's just like a green glow. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he comes out. He comes out Wolverine style. Just, ah! uh, but no, yeah, we were hanging out at Slaughtered Lamb. Tased. Yeah, nice. We were, nice. Yeah, we were hanging out at Slaughtered Lamb, and the um, the M train and the the F train and like the the BDFM line was like being a little weird at night. So we were like, let's just walk over to to the Bowery. And, you know, hop the train there to get back to Brooklyn. And I was like, well, hey, if we're walking to the Bowery, can we cut through Washington Square Park? You know, because I know it's been a while. Because like the last two or three times we went up to New York, you weren't able to go. I for didn't have the reason. time for it. Yeah. So I was like, if we're gonna be near it, because you know, <laughs> getting to the Bowery, you basically go around. You know, like, uh, or to cut through Washington Square Park is going the long way around. But you know, you you're like cutting. You're you're adding like two blocks. Yeah, and then you just cut so down. Like, yeah. I was like, can we can we stop by so I can snap a picture for Sam? And so, like, we we came in at, like, the perfect angle. So I was like, all right, let me just cross the street, take a picture here. And, you know, then we moved on. And and (laughs) I was like, I just wrote, like, sappy, you know, postcard, wish you were here. And, like, two minutes later, I got, ah, me too. (laughs) Or at least that's how I read it. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. And then then, uh, we had uh, Criff Dogs the next morning. Oh, yeah. You got, did you ever go to uh, Gray's Papaya? I did not. Up much on the to, Upper West Side. Much to uh, um, Ken's uh, chagrin. That's one of the one of the best hot dogs I've ever had. Or papaya dog. He 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 really wants me to go to. There one is of so many places. variations of it. Yeah. Kind of like Roy's. Yeah. There's a lot of very like Roy's being pizza. Roy's pizza being yeah. in the first Turtles film. Uh, though the second film they go to Domino's, don't they? The other way around. Okay. Domino's in the first one. They needed they needed a big sponsor for the first one, and the second one they had enough clout that they didn't need a huge company. They could get more rural, Authentic. or not rural, but yeah, more local. Yeah. Uh, even though the bulk of that film was shot in North Carolina, <gasps> except for their, except I think all the interiors, except for their uh, secret lair, which you can. Uh, you can visit if you ride the six train all the way downtown and stay on it until it becomes an uptown six. And of course, all the exterior shots where you see Manhattan in the background was mm-hmm. clearly filmed in Brooklyn. Yeah, but yeah, much much like uh, how uh, Ghostbusters did it. You know, a lot yeah. of exteriors in New York, but a lot of interiors elsewhere. Yeah, like Mostly the fire. LA. Yeah, like the firehouse that's in Los Angeles. The interior of the firehouse is in Los Angeles, but the exterior mm-hmm. still a functioning firehouse. And they were the first responders to the September 11th attacks because they're right like two blocks away. Mm-hmm ish probably yeah. more but whatever they're the closest firehouse go fuck yeah. yourself they have and they you can, yeah <laughs> you can see the painting. how you doing yeah, yeah you can see the painting of the ghost ma- does that thing have a name the ghost the guy behind the strike circle the the ghost the, the logo uh for the original ghostbusters no just ghost man 
I'm just going to call him well, Ghost. Ghost. I mean, the Ghost logo is called the No Ghost logo, yeah. but outside of that, yeah, there he, is. He's not like Jeff, the ghost, <laughs> yeah. the No Ghost logo. No, but apparently in the new Ghostbusters, that thing is a real ghost. In, in the, the, the new movie that's coming out? Yes, and has a name. Oh. It currently oh. escapes me, but it has a name and it wears a bow tie, apparently. Oh, because he's fancy. Just like Farnsworth. Yeah. Mm. 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 So, <laughs> <laughs> anybody else got anything to add? Uh, I went down to Charleston this past week. And right. visited Susan my s- Slots. But uh, not, not Charles <laughs> Tun, not Charles Town. <laughs> yeah, and visited my sister, uh, ate yeah. a whole bunch of southern food, finally tried uh, real grits. Have you ever Ooh. had fried Oreos? No. Did you? But did you? What did you put in your grits? Uh, shrimp was put in it for me. Uh, we took <laughs> a classic. Uh, we took the Charleston culinary tour and got to go to a few restaurants along the way. Try real, authentic, southern cooking. I guess the best way to describe it. And that was probably one of my most favorite meals of the entire tour. Does that speak highly of the tour or highly of the grits? Both. Okay. Cool, good. <laughs> I do love some good southern cooking. Mm-hmm. But yeah. That's uh, the best thing to come out of the South. Yeah, that and uh, whiskey. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey. Barbecue, which is, I suppose, food. Yeah. God. Hmm. Yeah. Leonard Skinner. Yeah, they're fine. But Her you band. can't eat them. <laughs> the fabulous Freebirds. I was always more of an Almond Brothers guy myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do enjoy Almond Butter. Uh, like uh, Melissa. You mean Jessica? There's my song called Melissa. Oh, yeah. just multiple women. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Jessica's cool, but Melissa was my favorite. <laughs> I was in an Almond Brothers cover band, so like I can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> we played that one time. I swear, really quick, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I we were at a, we were practicing once, and we weren't even really a band anymore. We were just jamming on the Almond Brothers. We were playing Whiplash for like. Close to an <laughs> close to an hour. Not my tempo. <laughs> close to an hour. I left to go watch one of my friends in a field hockey game, and I came back, and they were still playing Whiplash, and the drummer who had taken over for me was bleeding on the snare drum. They would just play Whiplash. They played just the, like the movie. The longest Whiplash I think they like that the gang all played was like an hour and a half. It was just the same song. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whiplash. <laughs> so, Damn. Jessica's cool, but yeah, Melissa was always my favorite song by them. Yeah. Of course, Ramblin' Man. Ramblin' Man. Yeah. Anyway, so this has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. Happy birthday, Chris. Yay! Happy birthday, Chris. Yay! Yay! Yeah, by the way, it's my birthday while we're recording this. Bye! Thank you very much. <laughs> Good night, Eric Bono. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a new commentary every Monday. We've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual Catching Up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.